my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. That's a thing we do all the time, human beings, because we're a religious creature, basically. So uh, even people who are not religious become religious because the, 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 the setup is in our brain. Uh, so we do it all the time. And what do I mean by that? Well, when it comes to developing your skills and really enjoying playing this instrument, there's one thing we do that keeps us from that, and that we try to find the objective truth to things. And just take one example. you know. I used to have a play with very fat strings because I heard that that give, gives you better tone and high action, right? Because those two things should give you better tone. But then I had an instrument that was almost impossible for me to play, but I did it anyway. So my playing experience got a lot worse and I could play, you know, fewer things on my instrument. So I was basically playing, you know, sub level at my skills and had worse tone. Because I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't bending the way I could could be. I wasn't doing any vibrato in the way I could when I had softer strings. Because I had to use a lot of force pushing the strings down towards the fretboard. So it's basically, it's very hard to have great tone when you're struggling to play the freaking notes, right? So I had worse tone from doing the things that objectively gives you better tone. Why? Because I forgot to count myself into the equation of good tone. Right? I forgot to say, okay, with all the things that comes together into a great tone, you know, we have different elements. We have the strings, we have the amp, we have the guitar, we have everything, right? And we have me. So I need to collect all the things in my recipe that gives me great tone. And if you hate playing with fat strings, then that won't give you better tone. It just won't, right? So another example, um, I used to, to, to practice a place where, where there was a lot of bands in the same room. And so I came, you know, way back, I came with my heavy, heavy Mesa Bookie. It, 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 it weighed a ton, like a Volk, Volkswagen Beetle, you know, carrying that around. And it was, you know, destroying my arm and I was carrying it from where we were practicing to my home back and forth every time. And because I heard that Mesa Boogie was the creme de la creme of amps at that time. It was pretty new back then, actually. I'm an old guy. And I was playing with these fat strings with high action, and I was struggling to just make stuff happen, right? And I had a weak left arm from carrying you know. So, and then suddenly, I, you know, these guys who were practicing in the room as well, they were over there. And so I asked, can I try your gear? And I, you know, I put on his, uh, his, you know, uh, guitar with thin strings, with low action, soft strings, and with sub standard boss pedals. It was like, that was the, his distortion. That was a boss distortion pedal. And then a huge Marshall stack, which was also, you know, kind of, you know, too much, right? And then I, you know, kicked the distortion, and I turned on the amp, and then I just did a, you know, a power chord. It was like, boom, it was a punch in the stomach. And that, and it was amazing to play, and there was feedback, and you know the amp was reacting to the guitar and to the pickups, and it was just a dream to play. And and suddenly my skills improved, my tone improved because you know it was easy to bend, easy to slide, everything was easier, and the tone was amazing. And there was this you know loop between the guitar, the pickups, and the amp. It was just a you know, and there I was with my little you know uh, uh, Mesa Boogie amp and my fat strings, and an idiot I looked like, right? Because I forgot to count myself in. So what's the lesson here? It is to make sure. And this is really the beginner's realm, right? When we begin, we, we, we don't know anything. We don't know what good guitars are and what should I look for. So we look for the objectively best all the time. What's a good beginner guitar? When I buy an electric, what should I buy? Should, should, should all the time. But then as you grow, 
wiser, you should really go from that state to focusing entirely on your own playing experience because that is the center of your tone. That is the center of your playing style. So when you focus on, when I pick up my guitar, I want to feel like, bam, it's the best guitar in the world, seriously. And if, if that isn't the case, then go hunt. I have several Squire guitars because some of them I really love. So it's not about the brand necessarily. You know, I must admit, you know, the quality of a Fender, whether it comes from Mexico or from, from the US, isn't, uh, you know, isn't an issue. But sometimes they use cheaper materials and the, the fret wire wears out faster and stuff like that. But, but it, the brand isn't the thing. You must focus on, you know, having that sense that, oh, I love this instrument. I love the strings. I love the feel of it. Everything is perfect, right? So keep hunting that and keep, you know, I love that sound. What pedals is he using? But it shouldn't be. The second you go into a discussion of whether you have the right kind of pedals or whether, you know, your effects is a lower quality or a higher quality, you're just out, you're out in the field, right? And we're, play we're standing here having fun playing, focusing on our playing experience and uh, what we love. And you are out with the dudes who's just discussing abstractions about what's best objectively and what's worst, which is idiotic. That's the religious part of the human experience. We love that. We love to kind of associate with expensive brands and there's nothing wrong with that. By all, there, there isn't. Just be conscious about it. So you don't play a crappy guitar you hate and through an amp that you hate to drag around, you know, create a solution that fits you. And don't focus on what the religious, you know, the guitar religion says, right? Because the second you, 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 you know, it just makes you so, a so much better player. If you pick up your guitar, you play it through your amp and you just go, oh, baby, I love that sound or I love that instrument, right? And when you touch other people's guitars, you think, ugh. The, the, you know, the neck is too wide, the strings feels differently, and ugh, the tone doesn't react like it should. You know, that should be your experience. So keep hunting that all you can. Um, just a final example, when it comes to practicing, right? I give you a lot of advices in, this video, in these videos, but don't forget to count yourself in. If I tell you that it's a really good idea to practice early in the morning, but all that happens when you try to do that is that you get, you know, you don't do it. And so you knock yourself on the head and say, oh, yeah, I should be doing it. I'm a bad person. And it never works for you. Then stop having that rule that you should practice in the morning or that you should practice X amount of hours in a row, whatever it is. You have to count yourself in. So everything I say, everything other people say with advice of what you should do, you should always play with your fourth finger. If that doesn't work for you, right? then you must throw it away. So everything is a, it's a process where you take good advice right, from everyone when it comes to gear and what you should do and practice and play, whatever. And then you must, that's the task here. You must you know, figure out what fits you and what doesn't. And don't hit yourself on the head because some things don't fit you because that's the right thing to do. And I should be doing that. You know, a very good example is from a totally different part of, of life, which is exercising. You know, people often say, I should be doing this. I should be, I should be running, you know, 30 minutes in the morning, but they never do. So is it good to be, should you be running 30 minutes in the morning if you won't do it? If you don't do it, is that a good rule? You know, it might be much better for you to say, I, I must run three minutes in the morning on work days, whatever, right? Because that you'll do. <laughs> and when you get out there, you run for 10 minutes and sometimes for 30 minutes and more, right? So you must figure out something that works for you. And if you can't make it work for you, you, you must throw it away. I sh maybe you should, but I shouldn't, right? <laughs> it, it's just it's every part of everything, right? So remember that whenever you, you start, you know, I, I should be, oh, I shouldn't be anything. Let me find something that works for me, a practice regimen that fits me and improve that. Let me find a guitar that fits me and then improve that. And when people come around and say, you're using eights? <laughs> you're using you know, the skinniest strings there is? What a, pff, you know, a thin tone. Then you'll know what to think instead of getting this, oh, I should be, right? Because it simply isn't true. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.